There is a lot of talk about the Snapdragon 480 processor that's found on the Nokia X20, with some people saying that it's a budget processor that shouldn't be put on a premium device such as the Nokia X20. But is this actually true? Let's find out. While I don't think benchmarks are an accurate representation of how I think a phone will perform day-to-day -day tasks, it does give you an idea about how much power the processor possesses. So since numbers don't lie, let's start with the benchmarks. Over here, I have the Nokia 9 PureView, the Nokia 8.3, the Nokia X20, the Nokia 7.2, and the Nokia 5.4. So I've arranged them in order from the cheapest to the most expensive. As you'd expect, the numbers kind of show you which class each device belongs in. So the 5.4 predictably got the lowest score, even though it has a Snapdragon 662 processor with a total score of 196,000. Now the processor on the Nokia 7.2 is over two years old and it achieves a score of 197,000 predictably. And this used to be a mid-range score. Now let's move on to the Nokia X20. It achieves an impressive 323,000 on the Antutu score with its Snapdragon 480. And then you have the Nokia 8.3 with its Snapdragon 765G, which achieves 374,000. Then you have the flagship from two years ago with its Snapdragon 845, the Nokia 9 PureView, which achieves almost 400,000. So just take a look at all these scores and in which category would you put the Nokia X20? Is it closer to the budget range slash mid-rangers of the past? or is it closer to the high-end range? What's even more interesting is that the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G, which has the Snapdragon 750G processor, achieved a score of less than 310,000 on this same performance benchmark. Now let's move on to the second benchmark test, and this one is a Geekbench benchmark result. And let's take a look at the numbers once again. So the cheapest device, the Nokia 5.4, achieved a single core result of 315 against 311 on the Snapdragon 660 on the 7.2, against 513 on the Snapdragon 480 on the X20, against 586 on the 8.3, against 513 for the Nokia 9 PureView with its Snapdragon 845. And let's take a look at the multi-core test as well. So you have 1,347 here, 1,207, 1,686, 1,749, and 2,185. So as you'd expect, the multi-core score of the Snapdragon 845 still defeats all of the newer devices because it is a flagship grade processor. But take a look at how close the Nokia 8.3 score is to the Nokia X20. They're pretty much within a 10% ballpark. Now let's talk about the competition. And once again, I'll bring to your attention the Samsung Galaxy A52. So the 4G version of the Samsung Galaxy A52 achieved a single core score of 536. So 536 versus 513. And that phone has a Snapdragon 720G processor. As for the multi-core score, it achieved 1582 versus 1689. So it's less than the Nokia X20. What about the A52 5G, which has a Snapdragon 750G processor? It actually achieved 415 on the single core score and 1,492 on the multi-core score. So it's actually worse in both of these aspects with its Snapdragon 750G processor than the Nokia X20 with its Snapdragon 480 processor. Of course, I'm gonna put the source of the Samsung Galaxy A52 results in the description down below, so check it out. Now benchmarks basically show you the peak performance of the CPU and the GPU, but they don't show you how well the phone can maintain peak performance over a long period of time. And this is where this test, CPU throttling, can help. So the duration of this test is actually 15 minutes, and let's take a look at the results with the X20 on the right, the 8.3 on the left. You'll immediately notice from the graph that the Nokia X20 actually managed to maintain 
a very good performance throughout the duration of the test, as opposed to the 8.3, which is performance started deteriorating, as you can see from the declining graph. Even though the max performance of the 8.3 is 161,000 versus 155,000 on the X20, if you look at the average performance, it actually goes in the favor of the X20, which managed an average of 151,000 versus 146,000 on the 803. So that tells you that this phone not only can perform almost similarly to the 803, but it actually maintains a higher average performance over a longer period of time. What is just as important as a processor, if not even a bit more important, is the type of memory that's used on every device. Now, this will definitely affect how a device would perform over a prolonged period of time, especially if you plan on keeping the device for two years plus. And I have really good news, actually, about the Nokia X20. Based on Andrew Bench's benchmark scores, this phone is most likely using UFS 2.2. And for comparison's sake, the A52 is still using UFS 2.1. So what's the difference? The difference comes with how quickly the phone can write stuff onto the memory and not just how quickly the phone can read stuff onto the memory. So this was the biggest improvement with UFS 2.2. And that does make a difference when it comes to speed of opening applications, how quickly the phone can get stuff out of the cache and so on. So I would assume this has UFS 2.1 and this has UFS 2.2 because of the difference with the random write and the sequential write, which are majorly in the favor of the X20. And of course, as you'd expect from a budget-friendly smartphone like the 5.4, it just doesn't stand a chance because its scores are almost half of the scores found on the X20. So this is another area where Nokia Mobile has future-proofed the X20 so that it would actually last you for a longer period of time. Okay, now that we've talked about all the geeky stuff and that's out of the way, the third most important aspect when it comes to the performance is definitely the optimization of the software. If you've ever used a phone that's supposed to be quick on paper and has very good processor, memory and all that, but still ends up hanging and being slow and sometimes lagging, then you've encountered a phone with really poor optimization. And I'm happy to say that based on my experience with the Nokia X20 so far, the optimization has been excellent. The phone genuinely feels just as fast as the Nokia 8.3, if not slightly faster when it comes to day-to-day -day activities. And that's really great. I also haven't encountered almost any slowdowns whatsoever while using this phone. What also helps is that since the Nokia X20 is running on Android 1, uh, pretty much almost stock version of Android 11, this operating system is quite lightweight. So that definitely helps with the overall feel and with the longevity that I expect out of this phone. So just for fun, let me do a quick speed test. Now let's go and try some regular applications. So we'll start with Instagram. Let's go for Twitter. Let's try the Play Store. Let's try YouTube. One football. As you can see, their performance is very, very, very close. Sometimes the X20 wins, sometimes the 8.3 wins. But when it comes to opening games, this is where the advantage of the 8.3 starts to show its face. So in conclusion, just because the Snapdragon 480 has a 4 in its name doesn't mean it's a weak processor at all. It's just that for Qualcomm, this is the entry-level 5G-capable chipset and definitely not an entry-level chipset in Qualcomm's lineup. 
and that is a huge difference. In terms of performance and speed, the Snapdragon 480 is neck and neck with the Snapdragon 720 and the 732G, and even uses the same cores as the ones found on the Snapdragon 765G. And in terms of gaming, the Adreno 619 is a very capable GPU. The only notable drawback of the 480 is that for some artificial reason, only Qualcomm knows, they limited its video recording capability to 1080p, which is really a shame. The UFS memory and the fast RAM are just the icing on the cake though for the Nokia X20's performance. And this makes the device run very smoothly and open apps very quickly. I easily see this device lasting for two plus years while still running quite well, assuming the optimization is done well on newer versions of Android, and that completely depends on Nokia Mobile. So let's hope they actually deliver in this regard. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.